So the DA has written to the Director General in the presidency, Pindi Lebaleni, who is also the secretary to cabinet, requesting that the DA's call for a state of disaster on ESCOM and the electricity sector be placed on the agenda of the next cabinet meeting. The underlying premise of that call for a state of disaster on ESCOM and the electricity sector is that, in view of the dire state of the country's electricity generation capacity, South Africa should be making it easier for independent power producers to bring new generation capacity online at scale and in the shortest possible time. Working through the framework of the electricity emergency response plan that Khaleb identified earlier, Cabinet must focus on lowest cost, accelerated solutions to solve the disaster. And some of the specific elements of this include identifying specific timelines for all new and supplementary energy projects and their accelerated implementation and connection to the national grid. We need additional measures to mitigate the disaster in the short term while embedding sustainable, medium and longer term solutions. We need to ease the costly regulatory burden on self-generation, especially at household level and in discrete industry environments. We need to put the national energy regulator into crisis mode to help lessen red tape and approve generation projects in shorter timelines. And then we need to reprioritize budget resources from non-emergency expenditure towards accelerated uh, spending in energy generation projects. This state of disaster through the electricity emergency response plan uh, mu must place a mandatory requirement on all approved independent power producer projects to provide quarterly updates on progress made. After living through the nightmare of load shedding for over a decade, South Africans should be afforded the courtesy of transparency and accountability on project implementation. The state of disaster must place a moratorium on localization requirements for new generation projects. It doesn't make sense that faced with a national disaster such as this electricity crisis, the government still seeks to enforce uh, local content requirements which potentially increase the cost and delay the, the rollout of renewable energy. Local material content requirements and import tariffs on imported steel also need to be waived to lower the cost of solar and wind generation. As an immediate step to address the short-term supply gap, the Department of Energy must be compelled to prioritize the review of the integrated resource plan in order to bring that new generation capacity online as quickly as possible. The integrated resource plan is intended as a short and medium-term uh, roadmap for decision-making regarding new generation capacity. As such, it should be updated regularly, at least every two years. But when we question the department on this, they indicate that they lack the personnel resources and more specifically, the electricity modelers to do this. And therefore, we are relying on outdated models and invalid or, or, sorry, invalid or unjustifiable assumptions. We cannot aff afford to ignore the reality that South Africa's electricity sector needs massive investments in distribution and transmission infrastructure. The country's transmission infrastructure is obsolete and is in urgent need of expansion. Grid facilities are currently unable to meet the country's growing electricity uh, demands, provide reliable power and further integrate new sustainable energy options. The DA believes transmission and infrastructure development should be opened up to public-private partnerships through uh, the Electricity Emergency Response Plan. Investors should be offered pathways through which they can participate in expanding infrastructure to meet future growth. They should be able to establish the required transmission network to integrate upcoming plan generation capacity and they should be able to undertake asset replacement to ensure reliability of supply and network optimization. On the 12th of April this year, the DA wrote to the Minister of Public Enterprises, Praveen Godan, and the Minister of Re Mineral Resources and Energy, Gwede Mantashe, requesting that they motivate for a cabinet resolution to have ESCOM and the electricity sector declared a state of disaster. 
Minister Godan chose to give a response in Parliament in which he erroneously dismissed the DA's call by assuming that we were only motivated by a fear of grid collapse. Now, while those fears may be legitimate, the DA's call for a state of disaster is actually driven by the need to ensure that additional generation capacity is added to the grid as quickly as possible and that ESCOM lowers its incidence of load shedding. It is the DA's considered opinion that what Gordon exhibited in his parliamentary reply was a complete dereliction of duty and that while he acknowledges the very real prospect of stage 8 load shedding, he won't declare a state of disaster to avoid an ongoing crisis that would imperil critical infrastructure and our economy. Municipalities in good financial standing must be supported by an enabling regulatory environment that allows expedited investment in and procurement of new generation capacity. While municipalities are now able to develop their own power generation projects and also procure from independent power producers, the minister and regulatory bodies still retain extensive authority on the clearance that municipalities must have to begin that power producer, uh, procurement process. In this regard, it is imperative that under a state of disaster, the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy should provide full transparency on its internal standard operating procedures to ensure that requests for Section 34 determinations by municipalities are attended to in the shortest possible time. Most importantly, as a country, we should be making it easy for small-scale embedded generation to become a critical component of the over overall electricity generation mix. This deals with power generation at residential, commercial or industrial sites where electricity is generated for own use. The processes and tariffs at municipal level must be improved to encourage rapid uptake by interested parties. Municipalities must have easy to follow small scale embedded generation application processes to allow customers to apply and get authorization to connect their systems, and these are typically rooftop solar systems, to the electricity grid. At the regulatory level, the National Energy Regulator must pursue an incentive driven feed in tariff system for small scale embedded generation that allows municipalities to compensate customers for excess electricity fed back onto their electricity distribution grid. Several mayors from across the country will also be writing to express their support for the DA's call for a state of disaster, including mayors from the city of Cape Town, the city of Johannesburg and Stellenbosch municipality. And we're joined today by Mayor Giersi van Dieventer from Stellenbosch municipality, who will be outlining some of the steps that have been taken at that municipality to free them from load shedding and to gain independence from ESCOM.